All right, so we've talked about fraction notation. We want to also discuss any other kinds of numbers that we might encounter in this course, and just in life in general. So we're going to look at decimals next. Then eventually we're going to jump from decimals and use it to work with percentages. So when we have percentages in an equation, we need to have it in decimal notation. So we need to know how to convert between the two. So what are the different place values for the digits in a number? We want to discuss that first. So go ahead and give yourself a decimal point. And I'm going to draw a line just so I know where that is as I'm writing on both sides. So the place value to the left of that decimal is worth what? It is the ones place. And I'm going to go ahead and write its numerical value to the right of it as well, just so we know. And next to him, the next digit, its place value is the tens. Next to him, what are we looking at? Hundreds. Hundreds. One hundred. So we're adding a factor of zero. Adding a factor of ten, or just a, a placement of zero. So next to hundreds is going to be thousands. One, two, three zeros. And next to him, ten thousands. And we could keep going and name those accordingly as well, adding another factor of 10 and another factor of 10. But in general, we just kind of stick with these couple decimal places. And then what about to the right? So these are my whole numbers. Now I'm talking about the fraction of a number. So the first fraction that I'm looking at is the tenths place. I have one tenth of a whole number that will sit at that digit place. Next to him, hundredths. Hundredths. See if I can spell it right. <laughs> so I have one one hundredth of a whole number in that place value. Next to him, hopefully you can see the pattern. You added another factor of ten. Thousandths. Thousandths place. One over one thousand. And last, ten thousandths. One over ten thousand. And again, we can keep going in that direction as well. Keep dividing by a factor of ten. So that number that we're looking at, let's just put it into these different place values according to where the decimal is. So I have a decimal point, and to the left of it, I have a factor three, four, eight, one. So I'm looking at 1,843. And what about to the right of it? I also have a decimal. I've got 9 tenths of a whole number that I'm adding onto it. And 5 one hundredths of a number that I'm also adding onto there. So we need to be able to tell which place am I looking at as I'm looking at the digits involved in my number. Because eventually, this decimal might go on for a really long time. And I don't want to have to write it out, so we might round. But when I tell you to round, I tell you to which place. Round to the nearest thousandth. Round to the nearest hundredth. So we have to determine which place are we talking about. So we're consistent across the board. Okay, so what else can we do? We can multiply any number by what? without changing the value. So just changing what it looks like. Talked about it a lot in the last two sections. One. And that one can take many different forms. For example, 10 divided by 10. Same thing divided by the same thing is one. 100 divided by 100. 1,000 by 1,000. 10,000 by 10,000. You get the idea. Same thing divided by the same thing is always one. So, we can move a decimal point, decimal point, looks like an A, there we go. We can move a decimal point in a numerator to the right to convert from decimal notation to fraction notation. Then we can also look at going backwards, vice versa. So, what happens? Let's just look at a few examples. If I take 
I can multiply it by 1, and I'm not changing anything. Agreed. And I can rewrite that 1 in whichever form I want to work with. So I'm going to choose 10 over 10. I'm still just multiplying by 1 right there, but changing the form of what it looks like. So I'll multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. What are we looking at? 1 over 10. So connotation-wise, when we're looking at the decimal, what do I have? I've got 1 in the tenths place. So as a fraction, does it make sense? I've got 1 tenth of a whole number. These two are equivalent, but using one form or another, we want to have that option. Okay, so looking at the next one. 0.6875, you can write a zero on the front, I don't really care. I can multiply that by one, and I'm going to choose a form of 10,000 over 10,000. Because when I choose that number, what comes out? 6, 8, 7, 5 over 10,000. So we want to move that decimal point until we're working with the whole number when we're converting to fraction notation. So hopefully you can start seeing a pattern of what's going on. Last, 53.47, if I want to make that a whole number fraction. I can multiply by 1. What should we multiply by? Factor of 1 written as 100 divided by 100. Because multiplying by two factors of 10, so I'm moving that decimal place two places to the right. So I've got 5,347 over 100. And hopefully you can see the other patterns that happened with these two. Okay, in our first example, we had to move the decimal point one place, so I had to multiply by a factor of 10, only one factor of adding zero on the back. And in this case, we had to move one, two, three, four to work with a whole number. So we had one, two, three, four factors of 10. So to convert from decimal notation to fraction notation, we count the number of decimal places. So if I give you an example like him, how many decimal places do I have until I get a whole number? One, two of them. Then move the decimal point that many places to the right. So now it's over here and write the result over a denominator with that number of zeros. So now I'm looking at 498 divided by 1 with two factors of 0. So two factors of 10. So those two are equivalent. 4.89 or 98, excuse me, and that fraction notation. They mean the same thing. They represent the same number. So let's practice a few so you can start getting comfortable moving between decimal and fraction notation. So in this case, how many decimal places do I have to move before I'm looking at a whole number? One, two, three all together. So this is going to be equivalent to 739 over 1 with how many factors of 0? 3. One, two, three. And again, does it match our connotation of what we understand with the decimal places? So I'm looking at tenths, hundredths, thousandths is the largest, or in this case, the smallest place that I have. So yeah, I have thousandths in my fraction. Makes sense. So take that try. Convert the number 1.5394 to fraction notation. So, how many decimal places do you have to move? One, two, three, four. So this is equivalent to 15,394 over one with four factors of zero. One, two, three, four. So we're talking about 10,000 down there. All right, now what about going backwards? If I have fraction notation and I want to write it as a decimal, we just have to reverse that process. So we're counting the number of zeros in the denominator. So I'll give you an example. If we look at this fraction, and we want to convert it to decimal notation, how many zeros in the denominator do I have? One, two, three, all together. 
So we want to move the decimal point that number of places to the which direction? So from decimal to fraction, we move to the right. Now we want to do the opposite, move to the left. That many decimal places to the left. And then leave off the denominator. Because we're moving away from fractions, so we shouldn't have a denominator. So, again, we had three factors of zero in the denominator. So my decimal point, the unspoken whole number, is always all the way on the right. I need to move that one, two, three points in. And I always X out my original decimal point so I don't get confused with which one is the new one. So this is equivalent to 8.679. So, let's do a few more of converting from fraction to decimal, just so we get comfortable with it. So, convert 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I know, I'm so creative making up these examples. Thank you. Over 10,000. If I want to write that as a decimal, what am I looking at? So, again, how many factors of zero in the denominator? 1, 2, 3, 4 all together. So wherever my decimal point is, all the way on the right, I need to move it to the left. One, two, three, four. And again, that was my first one. I'm going to exit out. So this is equivalent to 12.3456. Equivalent, but different forms. And again, as always, we do a few, you try a few. So convert these two fractions into decimal notation. So what numbers are we looking at? How many zeros do I have in the denominator over here? One, two, three. So I need to take my decimal point and move it to the left. One, two, three units. Three places. So it's equivalent to 4.131. The first one. Hopefully you're getting the same coming out. And what about the second? So again, one, two factors of zero in the denominator. So I need to move my decimal point, one, two, to the left. So that's equivalent to 5.73. So get comfortable converting between the two. We're going to use both of them in different situations. But again, we have to have the ability to work between both of the different notations.